Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because of what you've done already. Open the heavens. Open the heavens. Send your power down in Jesus' name. Make impossibilities possible. And roll the mountains away from everyone, Lord. And we pray, Lord, everywhere this message is going right now, I pray your power will follow that message. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. I want to talk to you on total healing for the whole man. Total healing for the whole man. There are people that limit healing to a particular area. But there is healing for the soul. There is healing for the body. There is healing for the mind. There is healing for the insane. There is healing for those who are deformed. There is healing for everyone. The whole man, as you look at yourself tonight, any part that needs the touch of God, any part that needs a miracle, any part that needs to rise up from the dead, any part of your body that has stopped functioning tonight, life is coming to that part in Jesus' name. Total healing, complete healing. And as you hear the message, many of the things we say will be happening to you already. And many of the miracles you'll be expecting, you have found this happened to so and so, this happened to such and such, that happened to so and so. All those things they are coming upon your life tonight in Jesus' name. In Hebrews chapter 13, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. What he did in the past, he opened the eyes of the blind in the past. He made the lame to walk in the past. He unstopped deaf ears in the past. He cured leprosy in the past. He raised the dead in the past. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today and forever. And he will do that same thing in your life in Jesus' name. Acts of the Apostles chapter 10. Acts of the Apostles chapter 10. Just to let you know that Jesus has not decreased in power. He has not decreased in his compassion. He has not decreased in his ability, divine ability that made him to do all that he did in those days. Acts of the Apostles chapter 10. Verse 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and with power. And then it says, and he went about doing good. It will come your way tonight. That place where you're sitting or standing or lying down, Christ is coming there to meet you at your point of need. He went about doing good and healing. How many did he heal? Tell me out loud. Healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Some people erroneously say when they're sick, they say it is the handwork of God. They say it is the will of God. They say it is the destiny that God has appointed for them when they are sick. They do not know that sickness comes from the devil. When God created Adam and Eve, he did not create sickness within. It was the fall into sin. It was yielding to the devil that brought all those sins. And so here it says, Jesus went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him because of the presence of God and because of partnership with the almighty God that's how those miracles happened and Jesus is still the same today and the almighty God is still the same today in fact in Malachi chapter 3 Malachi chapter 3. I'm reading there from verse 6. So you'll see, already we've read that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let's listen to the word of God concerning the Almighty God Himself, 
who was always with Christ and who is still with Christ. It says, for I am the Lord, I change not. I am the Lord, I change not. As he loved those people in days gone by, and he answered their prayer, he loves us the same, and he's going to answer every prayer. As he blessed all those people in days gone by, he blesses us today because he says, I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Therefore, ye followers of Christ are not consumed. Therefore, ye sons of God and daughters of God are not consumed. In Romans chapter 8, reading from verse 11, Romans chapter 8, reading from verse 11, we have heard about God the Father, He changes not. We have heard about God the Son, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let's hear something about the Holy Ghost. And you will know that that same power of the Holy Ghost resident in the believer, that same power, it's still there today. It tells us in Romans chapter 8, verse 11, But if the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, the Spirit, the Holy Ghost, so powerful, the Holy Ghost, so mighty, that Jesus had died. You know the story. He was crucified. You know the story. He died. You know the story, he was buried. On the third day is the power of the Holy Ghost that raised him from the dead. And it says, if that same Spirit, if that same Holy Ghost that has not changed, that raised up Jesus from the dead, dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by the Spirit that dwelleth in you. Tonight is that night. And tonight is your night. All the problems you have carried, all the mountains you have carried that weighed you down on your mind, on your back, in your family. Tonight is that night. The power of the Holy Ghost will roll everything away from you in Jesus' name. Let's quickly consider three things before we pray because tonight is night of power, night of prayer, a night of supernatural in your life in Jesus' name. Number one, God's promises and provision for total healing. God's promises and provision for total healing. What he promises, he provides for. And he gives us, he fulfills his promise. Every time we rely on that promise. Number two, gracious preparation and prescription for today's healing. Today is the day. I said today is the day. And I must say, I must personalize it. Today is your day. Anybody there that you are born with a particular deformity, that's how you are born. The Lord is going to turn everything around tonight. Anybody there, somebody there, your, your brain is like they are boiling water inside your brain. It's so hot. I bring peace and I bring rest and healing, deliverance on that brain tonight in Jesus' name. You see, whatever it is, you can't wait tonight. Tonight is the night of power. Gracious preparation and prescription. What do you do? How do you prepare so that today's healing will not miss you? That's what I'm going to talk about there in point number two. Number three, great power and prayer for timely healing. Great power and prayer for timely healing. There is a time attached to even the miracle. You don't want to suffer any longer. You don't want to endure the pain any longer. Your timely healing is available right here. Number one, God's promise and provision for total healing. You see, whenever we pray, we should know that God has promised what we're asking for. 
And if God has promised what we're asking for, we come with confidence, we come with boldness, we come with assurance. Uh, because we know who God is. His promise does not depend on how you feel. His promise does not depend on whether it is possible for you or not. It's possible for him. He is God and he is the one that promised it. And because of that promise, oh, praise the Lord tonight. Fulfillment of promises will happen here, will happen everywhere. You are hearing the word of God in Jesus' name. Look at this now, look at this now. Exodus chapter 15 verse 26. God's promises. Exodus chapter 15 verse 26. And said, if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God. Thank God that's what we're doing. You know, the, the Lord knows that you love the word, you hear the word, you read the word. You know, sometimes as you look around, you know, this one has a Bible, that one has a Bible, and when the Word of God is going on, we're hearing, we're soaking it in, we're sinking it in. That's the condition. And thank God, you are the candidate for miracle. I am a candidate for miracle. I am a candidate for miracle. It says, if ye shall diligently hack into the voice of the Lord your God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes. I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. I am the Lord that healeth thee. Who is your healer? I said, Who is your healer? And he's going to do it tonight. And it says, I will not bring any of the diseases of Egypt upon you. Well then, if the diseases of the world, diseases that is rampaging the villages, the diseases that is killing a lot of people in the world, if it comes to you, the number one thing you know as a child of God, as a believer, this is not from God. This is not from God. Any disease of Egypt, any disease of Babylon, any disease of the Assyrians, any disease of the people of the world that do not know God, and they are crying, this is killing them, this is tormenting them, this is torturing them. If it ever comes to you, the number one thing you know, this is not from God. If it is not from God, I reject it. If it is not from God, I reject it. And as we reject it, it will go in Jesus' name. And then he says, he says, I am, I am, I am the Lord that healeth thee. He is the ever-present healer. And the promise is so sure. The promise is so definite. Tonight, the fulfillment will come in your life in Jesus' name. We're looking at Numbers chapter 23. Numbers chapter 23. I read from verse 19. Numbers chapter 23, we're looking at verse 19 and see this a glorious promise of God. It tells us in verse 19, God is not a man that he shall lie, neither the son of man that he shall repent. As he said, and shall he not do it? He's asking us, what has God said? God said, I will heal you. Wouldn't he do? Of course, he will do it. He said, call unto me. And I will show you great and mighty things you never knew before. He has said it. Will he not do it? Of course he will do it. He said, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. He has said it. Shall he not do it? Of course he will do it. That's the assurance the Lord is giving us. He's telling us that whatsoever he has promised, he has also provided for the promise and the provision. The promise and the provision, they go together and thank God is coming your way tonight. It says, God is not a man that he shall lie. Neither the son of man that he shall repent. As he said, and shall he not do it? Then he says, or as he spoken, and shall he not bring it to pass? Behold, I have received commandment to bless. I have received commandment to bless, and he has blessed, and I cannot reverse it. The blessing of God coming upon your life tonight, Satan cannot reverse it. 
the blessing of God coming upon your life tonight, evil spirits cannot reverse it. Any enemy hidden somewhere, whatever they are doing, whatever they are saying, no enemy can reverse the promise of God in your life tonight in Jesus' name. If you are blind, he promises to open your eyes that you will see. If you are lame, he promises to make you rise up and walk. If you have HIV AIDS, he promises that it's going to take the HIV AIDS away. It's the disease of Egypt. It's the sickness of Assyria. It's the sickness of Babylon. And the sickness of Babylon will not be on any member of the church of the living God in Jesus' name. The devil cannot reverse this one. Your enemy cannot reverse this one. All the powers that may join together, conspire together against your life, they cannot reverse the promise of God in your life tonight in Jesus' name. And even you yourself, your mind, your thoughts, your own idea, your weakness cannot reverse the, the, the promise of God. If the strong cannot reverse something, can the weak reverse that thing? No matter how you are thinking, how will this happen? How will this happen? What God said will be, will be. What God said will be done, will be done. And nothing will reverse the promise of God in Jesus' name. Look at this in verse 23. Surely, everybody say surely. Uh, that's the certainty of the blessing of God coming upon your life tonight. He says, surely there is no enchantment against Jacob. There's no enchantment against me. I said there's no enchantment against you. Neither is there divination against Israel. According to this time, it shall be said of Jacob and of Israel, what has God God wrought. God is about to do something. You will see with your eyes. You will hear with your ears. You feel it in your body in Jesus' name. In 1 Kings chapter 8, 1 Kings chapter 8, I want you to see the faithfulness of God. The God that cannot fail. That when he gives a promise, he fulfills a promise. He cannot fail. And he's a faithful God. He's faithful to the youngest and to the least in the family of God. He's faithful to the leaders and to the pastors in the church of God. He's faithful to the members and the workers. He's faithful to everyone. There's nobody that can rise up and say, yes, he's faithful to everybody, only he's not faithful to me. That cannot be. He's faithful to everyone. And tonight, you will taste the faithfulness of God. I said you will taste the faithfulness of God. When a father, a mother prepares food, he prepares the food for all the children in the family. And no matter, you know, what that child might be or what child might not be, it is for everyone in the family. And you are part of the family of God. In fact, even our parents, when they prepare food, if there are some children around that are in the house at that time, even though they may not be their children, they are not going to allow those children to just stay like that while their own children are eating. Anyone that comes near God and he says, I have a need, I am sick, I'm tormented, I'm oppressed, I have this challenge, I have that challenge. As the Lord is blessing his own children, that blessing will flow to everyone. Look at this, look at this in First Kings chapter 8. First Kings chapter 8, reading from verse 56, it says, Blessed be the Lord that has given rest unto his people Israel. He will give you rest. Rest in the day and rest in the night and rest from all the torments and all the pressures of the enemy. And it says, according to all that he promised, there has not failed one word of all his good promise, which he promised by the hand of Moses, his servant. It says, according to his promise, there has not failed one promise, which he promised by in the word of God. That's why we know tonight, since he promised to heal, that promise will not fail. 
He promised to deliver. That promise will not fail. He promised to save. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, that promise shall not save. Anyone that says, I don't want to go to hell. I want to go to heaven. Jesus says, come in. Come in. Because whosoever, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's why we have the confidence that today as we come to the Lord, the mercy of God is so abundant. The compassion of the Lord is so overflowing. And the salvation of the Lord is available for everyone. And his miracles, he is not stingy with miracle. He gives to everyone. He gives the promise. He gives the provision. Je Jeremiah chapter 33. And we're reading from verse 3. Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3. Praise the Lord for miracles tonight. I said, praise the Lord for miracles tonight. I feel the power. I sense the power. And I know God is going to do something supernatural in your life tonight in Jesus' name. Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 3. Call unto me and I will answer thee. Call unto me. There is no barrier tonight. There is not a barrier anytime. And there is no wall of demarcation between you and miracle tonight. The moment you stretch out your hand, you touch God's miracle power. And the moment you call on the name of the Lord tonight, you are going to touch that miracle working power in your life. He says, call unto me and I will show, I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things. Not ordinary things, tonight extraordinary miracles. Tonight mighty miracles. Tonight miracles you never had of in your life is coming your way even tonight. It says I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. You will know it. I said you will know it. In Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8, reading from verse 16. And remember that Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. It's always the same. He's done it before. He's going to do it again. He tells us in Matthew chapter 8, verses 16 and 17. It says, when the evening was come, like this evening now, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word. The word of God you are hearing has enough power loaded into it to cast out every devil that may torment anyone there and healed all that was sick. He healed all that were sick and he also cast out all the evil spirits. Then in verse 17, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, himself, himself, himself is right by your side there. I said is by your side right there. Himself, himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. That is, number one, God's promise and God's provision. For total healing. Point number two. Gracious preparation and prescription for today's healing. How do we prepare ourselves? How do you prepare yourself? What is it? God, God says one, two, three. Do this and healing is guaranteed. Guaranteed. That you prepare yourself. And you say, today, tonight, is the day of my healing. This moment is the moment of my miracle. And then, if I need to prepare at all, get myself adjusted, get myself ready, so that this healing of today will be mine. What is it I do? Number one, look at this in Second Chronicles chapter 7. Second Chronicles chapter 7, I'm reading from verse 14. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. If my people, are the people of God here tonight? I said that the people of God here tonight, God will fulfill his promise in your life. If my people, which are called by my name, 
You are called by the name of God Almighty, by the name of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You are called by the name of Christ, your Savior, your Lord. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal and will heal and will heal their land. Number one, repent. Repent. You see, if you have been, you know, going your own way, you've been doing things that you just say, well, I just like doing this, but God says it's not good. That thing is not right. And you have not been walking the way of righteousness. It says, number one, as you are getting ready for the miracle that is fast coming into your life tonight, number one, repent. It will happen. I said it will happen. Let's look at number two. First Kings chapter 15, verse 12. First Kings chapter 15, verse 12. First Kings chapter 15, verse 12. It tells us in this chapter 15, verse 12, and it took away the Sodomites out of the land and removed all the idols that his fathers had made removed all the idols that his fathers had made. Number one, repent. Number two, remove any idol there. Anything you have made an idol. And you look to that thing as if that thing were a little God. A little God. Yes, you know there's God Almighty there. You know there's Jesus there. You know there's the Holy Ghost there. But you look to this thing as a God, and you depended on it. And your mind is always there. Is that thing that will save you, that thing that will heal you, that thing that will bless you, is that thing. You put your confidence in nothing apart from the Almighty God. Remove the idols. Remove the idols. Number one, repent. Number two, remove. Number three now, Psalm 105. Psalm 105. I'm reading from verse 5. Psalm 105, reading from verse 5. It tells us in verse 5, Remember his marvelous works that he has done. Remember how he opened the eyes of the blind. Remember how he removed mountains from the lives of people. Remember, he even took hunch back away from, you know, some people when we prayed. Remember how he opened the eyes of the blind. Number one, repent. Number two, remove. Number three, remember. Remember that this your case. It's not above the mighty power of God. It's done this for other people before. He's giving children to the barren. He's giving wives to bachelors. He's giving husbands to, you know, sisters that depended upon him. There's no miracle you are looking for today that he has not done before. He had brought water out of the rock, dry rock. He has opened the Red Sea for the people of God to pass over. He has made the people that have failed and failed and failed for many years to become successful. He's made the tail. He's turned them to become head. There's nothing you are looking for that the Lord has not recalled. Recall those miracles God has done. Remember his marvelous works that he has done. His wonders and the judgments of his mouth. Number one, repent. You search your life. If there's any sin hiding there, any sin, you know, in the corner of your heart right there, you say, Lord, I'm sorry about that, and I will not do that again. Grant me grace to live an overcoming life. That's all. And then remove. If there's an object of sin, object of temptation, pornography, all those evil things that is drawing you away from the path of righteousness and holiness. Remove. Then number three, remember. Number four, reject. What does that mean? Reject. Reject. We're looking at Second Kings chapter 20. Second Kings chapter 20. I'm reading from verse 1. Second Kings chapter 20, verse 1. In those days was Ezekiah sick unto death. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, 
thus says the Lord, set your house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Look at what Isaiah said. Isaiah came with prophecy unto this man, Ezekiah. He said, your time is up. Your time is over. You will die. You will not live. The man rejected that. Have you had any dream that threatened you, that terrified you, that is tormenting your heart? And you always remember that dream. It's like you're going to collapse. It's like you're going to die. It's like time is over. You reject, reject that. Ezekiah said, no, I'm not ready to die. You will not die. I said you will not die. Isaiah's prophecy cannot kill you if you reject it. The dreams you had cannot kill you if you reject those dreams. And the prophecies coming from, you know, somebody wrote to you and said, well, uh, they say you are deeper life, you don't believe in vision or dream, but in our uh, whatever, they saw this revelation, go tell your brother, go tell your uncle, go tell so and so that his time is over, he's going to die. If you reject it, it is cancelled in Jesus' name. You reject, number one, repent. Number two, you remove. Number three, you remember. Number four, you reject. You say, that prophecy is not for me. That statement of death is not for me. That prophecy of failure is not for me. That one of premature death in my family, that is not for me. I reject it. It will not happen in Jesus' name. Verse two. Then he turned his face to the wall, and he prayed unto the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth, and with a perfect heart, and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Ezekiah wept so, and it came to pass, afore Isaiah was gone out into the middle of the court, to the middle court, that the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Turn again, and tell Ezekiah, the captain of my people, thus says the Lord God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer. Your prayer is answered tonight. I said your prayer is answered tonight. Listen to me. Your prayer is greater than the prophecy that is coming from anywhere. Prayer is witchy. Prayer is great. Prayer will destroy every prophecy you ever had negative in your life. Isa was still around, and this man prayed. It was not a long prayer. He just said, Lord, I reject that. I reject that. And the Lord said, Isa, go tell him. His prayer has canceled that prophecy. And tonight, the prayer will pray here. I said tonight, the prayer will pray here. Will cancel every negative prophecy in your life in Jesus' name. And then look at verse 6. I will add unto thy days, how many years? 15 years. And I will deliver thee and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria. And I will defend this city for mine own sake and for my servant David's sake. That's the preparation we're making. What's our preparation? Number one is to repent. What's our preparation? Number two is to remove. What's our preparation? Number three is to remember. Remember the great works, miracle working power of God. What's, what's our preparation? Number four is to reject. Number five, rebuke. Rebuke. We're looking at uh, Luke chapter four. In Luke chapter four, I'm reading from verse 38 and verse 39. Luke chapter four. We're looking at verse 38 and verse 39. Look at this. Luke chapter 4, verse 38. And he, he arose out of the synagogue and entered into Simon's house. And Simon's wife's mother was taken with a great fever. And they besought him for her. And he stood over her. 
and rebuked the fever and rebuked the sickness and rebuked the disease. We don't pet disease at the back. We don't accommodate disease in our lives. We don't tolerate sickness in our lives. We don't share our lives with a disease. And we don't say, okay, stay in that area. I will take this area. We don't partner with disease or with infirmity in our lives. Rebuke that disease. What are you finding there? What are you doing in my life? I'm a child of God. This body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And I don't give any, any area of this body unto the devil, unto disease. Rebuke that disease. If you rebuke that disease, it will vanish away in Jesus' name. Look at that, verse 39. And he stood over her and rebuked the fever. And it left her and immediately, immediately, that's describing your miracle tonight. Immediately she arose and ministered unto them. Number six, receive, receive. You see, when God gives something, you have to receive. When he gives your sight, you have to, yes, Lord, I accept. Yes, Lord, I believe. Yes, Lord, it's mine. I receive. We receive healing. We receive deliverance. You welcome that healing into your life. You welcome that miracle into your life. Receive. We're looking at uh, we're looking at Mark chapter ten. Mark chapter ten, and I'm reading from verse fifty-two. Mark chapter ten, verse fifty-two. I praise God for you tonight because you'll be a recipient of the miracle power of God in Jesus' name. Look at this, Mark chapter 10. And we're looking at verse 52. 10, 52, 10, 52. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. And immediately he received. You see that? Jesus pronounced the word. He said, Go your way. You have faith in God, and your faith has made you whole. You are whole tonight. You are healed tonight. You are delivered tonight. And it's total healing for the whole man. Every part of you from the top of your head to the tip of your toe. Stroy is coming unto you. And healing coming your way. And as you say, yes, Lord, I receive. It is yours tonight. And immediately he received the sight and followed Jesus in the way. Number one, repent. Number two, remove. Number three, remember. Number four, reject. Number five, rebuke. Number six, receive. Number seven, rejoice. Rejoice. Are you ready? I said rejoice. Are you ready? The joy of the Lord is your strength. Wipe all the tears away. Take all the sorrow away from your heart. Because tonight, something will happen. Heaven will sing because of you. Your children will sing because of you. Your husband will rejoice because of you. Miracle, a miracle you have never seen, a miracle you have never felt in your life. As we begin to pray, you'll find the quickening power of the Holy Ghost turning everything around, and joy will fill your soul in Jesus' name. Luke chapter 13, Luke chapter 13, I'm reading from verse 17. Luke chapter 13, verse 17 in Luke 13. Verse 17. Look at what it says. Luke 13. We're looking at verse 17. And when he had said these things, all his adversaries were ashamed. All your adversaries will be ashamed. All your enemies will be ashamed. When they see you, now you are healthy, you are made whole, that miracle power of God. They thought, uh -uh, uh, she's going there again, she's going there again, but he, he went before, what did he bring back? Let them wait and see, by tomorrow when you get back home, they will know what you are bringing back. 
they will see the miracle power of God in your life because tonight is going to be your night of miracle supernatural wonders in Jesus name and then and all the people rejoice for all for all the glorious things which he had done which were done by him they rejoice they rejoice tonight there's going to be joy in this place shouts of joy shouts of praise the lord shouts of hallelujah because of the great things the lord is doing rejoice why did they rejoice let me show you look at it from verse 11 verse 11 and behold there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called her unto him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. Are you there, woman? Thou art loosed from thine infirmity. Seek, paralyzed, tormented, bound in chains, you are loose from your infirmity. Man, tonight, you are loose from your infirmity. Verse 13, and he, and, and he had, he laid his hands on her, and immediately, immediately, she was made straight and glorified God. That's the reason for the, what preparation, what preparation we make? Repent, remove, Remember, reject, rebuke, receive, you will rejoice. Point number three now, great power and prayer for timely healing. Great power and prayer for timely healing. God will not be late in your life. I say God will not be late in your life. Timely healing tonight is your night in Jesus' name. The power and the prayer. They go together. The power and the prayer. The power and the prayer. How does that happen? Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 1. And when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits, to cast them out. That's the power he's giving us. He gave them power. He gave some clean spirits. Every unclean spirit, every demonic spirit in your life that has operated unknowingly until this day, they are out tonight in Jesus' name. It may be in the brain that turns the brain. It may be in the mind that makes the mind to be derailed. It may be your spirit in your soul that tears you apart and torments you. Tonight, I speak the word of authority and power against every evil spirit that might have tormented your life. You are free tonight in Jesus' name. You are free to sleep. Because you know that in the night, you know, they will come again and, you know, torture you and pinch you and throw arrows at you. Every time you're thinking, of, I'm going to sleep now, you're, you're afraid to close your eyes. Tonight is the end of that thing. Because he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease verse 7 and as see go preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand then it says in verse 8 heal the sick the sick will be healed tonight cleanse the lepers raise the dead cast out devils freely ye have received freely give tonight your portion will come unto you mark chapter 16 in Mark chapter 16 verse 17 the sign shall follow them that believe in my name shall they cast out devils in my name shall they cast out devils that name is still mighty and powerful today 
And once the demons hear that name, they flee. They don't want to remain because that name torments evil spirits. That name tortures the devil. And once we mention that name tonight and you hear that name, evil spirits will run away from your life in Jesus' name. This sign shall fall them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. And they shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly sin, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay their hands on the sick and they shall... They shall, they shall recover. Verse 20, and they went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord walking with them and confirming the word with signs following. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Signs will follow tonight. Amen. Miracles will follow tonight. Because it's the day of power in the old way. Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4, reading from verse 18. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel, the good news to the poor. And when the good news comes to you, you'll be poor no more. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. If your heart is broken, wife ran away, that wife is coming back. Husband jilted, jolted, you ran away, that husband is coming back. Child ran away from home, you are brokenhearted, that child is coming back. We send the Holy Ghost after on away children tonight. And I command children, Holy Ghost, catch them. Bring them back home in Jesus' name. Because he comes to give healing to the brokenhearted and to preach deliverance, to proclaim, declare deliverance to the captives. All your yokes are broken tonight. And the recovering of sight to the blind. I told you, the blind will see. And to set at liberty them that are bruised. And to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister. And sat down and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fasting on him. And he began to say unto them, tell me. Tell me, I said, tell me, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Your fulfillment has come. Your miracle has come. Your day of miracle, your day of the supernatural, your day of wonders. This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Look at verse 32. Verse 32. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with power. His word, he sent out the word, and power followed after that word. Everywhere that word was heard, power was experienced. Everywhere that word traveled to, power accompanied that word and tonight the power of the Lord accompanies the word in your life in Jesus name look at verse 36 and they were all amazed in verse 36 and they speak among themselves saying what a word is this for with authority and power with authority and power with authority and power he commandeth the unclean spirits, and they come out. And tonight, there will be a repetition of that same thing. He commanded the unclean spirits, and they come out. James chapter 5. James chapter 5. James chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 15. James chapter 5. Verse 15, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick. Whatever sickness tonight, that sickness is going to be healed. 
whatever infirmity tonight, the Lord is going to remove that infirmity. Blind eyes opening, deaf ears hearing, lame people rising up and walking, and people that have some deformities, some infirmities, some peculiar problems in their lives. Tonight, as the power comes forth and the prayer of faith is prayed, wonderful healing. Wonderful deliverance. And mountains are going to get away from your life in Jesus' name. Now you must understand that this is for you in particular. Everyone here, everyone here, there is a miracle with your name attached onto you need you need a miracle you need a miracle and it's coming you need a miracle and it is coming it will come in Jesus name I can see you now I can see you receiving that miracle accepting that believing that miracle and it's going to happen to you in Jesus name miracle of salvation it will happen miracle of sanctification it will happen Miracle of power in the Holy Ghost, it will happen. Miracle of healing, it will happen. Miracle of deliverance, it will happen in Jesus' name. Mountains melting away, it will happen in Jesus' name. I see the barren woman there tonight. It's your night of miracle, baby. It's coming your way in Jesus' name. Look at that man with insanity. The Lord is rolling away that insanity, that thing that is, you know, troubling your head and turning your head as if, you know, everything, as if you are going to fall. That right now, peace and sanity is coming to your mind in Jesus' name. Remember, great power and prayer, great power and prayer for timely healing. Are you ready? I said, Are you ready? Why don't you rise up on your feet? Because tonight is power in the old time way. Power in the old time way. Power in the old time way. Open your mouth and tell the Lord definite sin that you want him to do. Because tonight, tonight is going to be definite. Tonight, extraordinary. Tonight, the mighty power of God that cannot fail. The power that cannot fail. The power that cannot fail. Don't exclude yourself. Don't eliminate yourself. Tonight is your night. Tonight is your night. Tonight is your night. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, tell the Lord. The whole man receiving total healing, total healing for the whole man. Stroke is going to be healed. Stroke is going to be healed. You had an accident before and, you know, it appears that, you know, something happened and now one leg is shorter than the other. Miracle is coming to that leg. Swellings in your body. Goiter is going to vanish away. Hunch back is going to vanish away. And cancer germs is going to be, they are going to be destroyed. You will not die. No, you cannot die. No, you will not die. This is not the time to die. This is a time of miracle. This is a time of life. Life coming your way. Your miracle is coming. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, tell the Lord, tell the Lord. The healing is tonight. The healing is tonight. The manifestation of the power upon your life is tonight. It's tonight. Night of wonders. Night of signs and miracles. Night of great deliverances. This is the night. This is the night. This is the night. It's coming now. It's coming now. It's coming. It's traveling to you. It's getting to you now. It's getting to you now. Repent. If there's anything there that you know you've dabbled into that is not of God, repent. Remove any idol there, any talisman there, any waistband there, any juju there, any concoction there. Remove. Remember, remember what he has done, the great things he has done for his people. Remember. He's done it in the past, and it's God, he changes not. He's done it for other people just like you. 
and it changes not remember reject any negative prophecy reject any thought in your mind that is negative reject any dream that is terrorizing your life tormenting your life reject rebuke this sickness i rebuke you this infirmity i rebuke you this torment i rebuke you this blindness i rebuke you this deafness i rebuke you and this captivity of the enemy i rebuke you rebuke receiver is coming receiver it's coming receive it's coming receive it is yours and rejoice and rejoice and rejo what a good god will serve what a glorious wonderful god will serve what a mighty god will serve what a miracle working god will serve rejoice and now is the time now is the time now is the time now is the time you are the candidate for miracle the lord has been waiting for you and the lord is looking for you and he says this is your moment this is your moment this is your moment blind eye get ready this is your moment let people get ready this is your moment any swelling there, this is the moment. HIV is to be healed, this is the moment. Insanity, madness to be taken away, this is your moment. You are born with that condition, this is the moment. This is the time, this is the time, this is the time, the time of power. The time of power, the moment of power is coming right now. The moment of power is coming right now. The moment of power is coming right now. You will rejoice. You will sing. This is the day. This is the day. The hour of your miracle. The moment of your miracle. The moment of his power. The moment of his power. Glorious power chain breaking prayer is happening right now it's happening right now it's happening right now it's happening right now those cancer germs are dying away right now this at the moment tuberculosis is being healed right there this at the moment somebody is vomiting out something right now this is the moment this is the moment the person urinating blood this thing is stopping right now that is the moment the noise you have been hearing in your ears in your mind all that noise is going right now this is the moment that he was speaking to you directing your life and destroying your life is going right now this is the moment it is the moment the fellow that has heat all over your body is going right now the moment of his power the day of his power the night of his power is going right now the fellow that had the boil under your armpit that thing is drying up right now it's drying up right now it is the moment of miracle it is the moment of miracle this moment will not miss you this moment will not pass you by it is happening it is happening the fellow over there, you are not too old yet, your air is falling off. Your air is falling off and the Lord is saying, it's replacing everything, it's replacing everything. It's the moment of your miracle, the moment of his power upon your life. It's there, it's there, it's there. The ulcer patient there, ulcer patient, the Lord is saying, is healing you right now. It's healing you right now. It's going right now. Also, is going right now. Healing, healing taking place. Healing taking place. It is the moment of his power. It is the moment of his power. Get it right now. Receive, receive, receive. And it's yours. Receive, and it is yours. Receive, and it is yours.
In Jesus' name we pray. Miracle people, in Jesus' name we pray. Wait now, this is the moment when you hear the final amen is done already. Look at those Egyptians right there now. Look at that infirmity right there now. Look at that condition right there now. Whatever it is, whatever it is, look at it now. This is the last time you'll see that thing in your body. Identify that thing. Lay your hand upon yourself and there is up the other hand. And when you hear the final amen, check up, check up, check up. That thing is gone. Are you ready? Father, in the name of Jesus, we look up to you right now. This is the night of your miracle. In the life of everyone, in the body of everyone, Lord, I pray, total healing, total deliverance, total freedom for everyone in Jesus' name. The swelling on the body of anyone there, either in the tummy or in the head or in the throat, the goiter or the hunchback or the ear, I command you swelling, come out in Jesus' name. Fever, sickness, pain, heat in the body, I rebuke you. And I command you, come out in Jesus' name. My grain headache that has been there in sense, almost breaking the head of that individual, I command that my grain headache be healed in Jesus' name. I command the stammering of that person there that the stammering will cease right now. And you'll talk normally and you'll talk fluently in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for those that have cancer germs in the body. All those cancer germs, I take the life out of you. I destroy those cancer germs. I dry up those cancer germs. Be healed in Jesus' name. The pain that has come with the cancer, I command that pain come to an end. The swelling that has come with that cancer, I command that swelling come out in Jesus' name. Ulcer that is grinding that person, almost fainting, I command that ulcer now be healed in Jesus' name. Epilepsy, you have no right to be there anymore. I command that epilepsy be healed in Jesus' name. The fellow that is sending noise in the ear, I command that noise now to come to an end. That noise in the ear be removed in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for that person. It appears part of your body is almost just wearing off part of the just wearing off. What do they call that? Whatever the name, leprosy or whatever. I command right now that your body will be complete. And all the disease on your skin that is making the body to just wear off like that. I arrest that situation now. Be healed in Jesus' name. Lord, those who are blind or their eyes are dim. Touch these blind eyes. Touch these dim eyes. Lord, I pray, open these eyes. Make them see clearly in Jesus' name. Those who are deaf and dumb, I pray the Lord will touch you right now. Hearing will come to you. Your dumb tongues, tight tongues will be totally loose and set free right now in Jesus' name. Lord, those who have stroke or those who have polio or those who are lame or those who are paralyzed in any way, I ask right now, touch them miraculously. Touch them miraculously. Rise up and walk in Jesus' name. That withered hand, I command life into that withered hand. Stretch out that hand and behold in Jesus' name. Barren women there, you are not barren anymore. I command life in your system. Life in your system. 
have your miracle children in Jesus name Lord everywhere now miracle everywhere healing everywhere deliverance this is the day this is the night and this is the moment of miracle Lord I pray that your people will receive it right now in Jesus name Confirm your miracle power everywhere this sound is coming to. Confirm your miracle power right now. We bless your name, magnify because we know you have done it. In Jesus' name we pray. It has happened. I said it has happened. I said it has happened. Check it up and you see that the miracle is there already. It's there already. Check up. It's power as in the old time way. Power as in the old time days. Check it up. You see it's gone. You see it's gone. You are swelling on your, you know, lower part of your abdomen. If you check up now, that thing is no more there. And the fellow that has uh, the noise in the ears, so check everything is calm right now. You brought somebody there that was insane, having mental problem. You know, talk to them right now. Everything now is normal. And uh, you know, you are blind. You can open your eyes now and see. You are lame before. You can do what you are not able to do before. Receive, receive. You've got it already. And the maker of God will not miss you in Jesus' name.